Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amar. In this video, we are going to learn uh, about the script activity in Azure Data Factory. And uh, you guys know that uh, we can run the store procedure or we can run the select query in this uh, script activity in Azure Data Factory. And once we do that, uh, it's going to return us uh, some results. Um, so here is the result set. Uh, it's uh, in uh, this example, it is returning. Uh, so let's say it's the result sets. Uh, if it is returning, uh, I need to get the row count. I can get that. Or uh, if I need to get uh, the rows, uh, I can get that either. Now, now, the problem is like how to loop through these values and maybe save into variables and use them later. Uh, that's what we are going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. First of all, what I have here, I have this query. And uh, this is uh, returning us uh, uh, two records. Uh, so it is returning us a salesperson first name, salesperson last name, and region. Uh, so you no worries if you want to get more records it's going to return you more records we can do that as well so it is uh, uh, returning us a lemon record in this case so we can loop through all of them but just to make it easy and simple i'm going to only select two records now we go to the azure data factory here and uh, i'm going to cancel this out here and let's create a new pipeline in this pipeline now what we are going to do we are going to use a script task so now we'll use a script activity here. I often call it task because I came with the background with the SSIS and we call everything a task. Here is the activity. Now go to settings here and here you will be creating linked service. So now go right here. These are different sources you can use. I'm going to use Azure SQL database. That's where my database is. So use a subscription and here you will select the database. Here you will select database here server database and name tb user and here we will use the password test your connection and i'm gonna call this one azure sql db link so we create this linked service so here we have uh, two options. We have a query here where data set statements that return one or more result sets uh, that can be written here. The second part is a non-query. That means insert, update, delete, and all those statements. So here I'm going to put this uh, select query because it is returning us uh, some records. Uh, now, as of now, we are not going to go with the pair script parameters or anything else because we have done a detailed video. So watch that video in the playlist. Uh, let's go and uh, debug. Now this script is going to execute and then return us two records. Now those records will be coming as a rows output right here and you can see right there they are part of just a JSON file or data. So here is our result set count zero record affected if we have done some update delete or something they will be coming here but we have not done anything and the rows returned that means the number of rows that it returned us those are two and these are those rows so we need to select maybe i have to put this first name last name and region into the variable and loop through in some for each loop that's how i want to treat this now i need a for each loop and i'm going to bring a for each loop right there and here I'm going to connect my script to the for each loop. Now I'm going to go ahead and create three variables. So I'm going to go variable here and I'm going to call the F name. That's my first variable. Then second variable, I'm going to call it the L name. And then I'm going to call the another one is the region. So once you have saved the values in the variable, you can maybe before even use that, you can have another insert statement, maybe pass this to the some other place uh, to the maybe child uh, pipeline and all that so you can do tons of things here but i'm just giving you how to extract the values so once you have the values it's your responsibility or requirement how you are going to use it so my goal is to get the val these values into the variable for now and then you once you see that you can always use wherever you need it to use it okay so we go to the for each loop here and then go to settings and here i'm going to go sequential um, I can just leave this as it is, so it's going to do parallel, but uh, I'm going to go sequential through those results. So here in the items, uh, I'm going to go to the items here and select a script uh, one, um, that's the activity name, and then dot. So if I do dot here, I don't even know what I should put here, right? So I did not notice, so I'm going to just leave this here as it is, go back to output, uh, and in the output, uh, you see that uh, this is what I need. So it is a result set. So. So I'm going to copy that part. So in the result sets, 
this is the array I want to get, okay, in the rows. So I'm going to go right here again, go to the uh, output dot and paste that result sets. And here I'm going to put a zero, okay. So from the result set array index, they get the first array and that is the rows dot rows. So that's what uh, I'm uh, getting. So now I'm this is going to return me all those rows. One other way to handle this one, if you don't want to write like this, uh, uh, there is, uh, I believe you can uh, put in the parentheses as well. And uh, that will be, um, let, let's go with this one, then I will test the other part. But uh, this is how you are going to have this array with the uh, index zero. That means uh, the first array we need to get from uh, this result set. Uh, and we that is a rows. So I hit OK now. And uh, then uh, we are going to go ahead and debug. But before we debug, it's, it's going to give us error because we have to put at least one activity in the for each loop. Now we are going to debug here. And uh, this has completed successfully. And uh, you can see that there are two uh, well, uh, elements here that we are getting the values for. And you can see that it is a loop in through multiple times. So that means it took two counts uh, items from that rows array. OK, so as of now, we don't have anything in the inside. So it is just a wait statement. Uh, I'm going to do one thing here and uh, just uh, show you right there. This expression I will put in the uh, just uh, description so you can always use that as well okay I'm gonna use copy and bring it here and just paste it here also you can do something like that uh, uh, if you don't want to use uh, just the dot rows you can always say single quotes rows and that should work as it is so you just give me the name of the array here so copy go back here And uh, then remove this, okay? So you don't need actually dot between that. So once you, if you are using uh, these uh, parentheses and single quotes around it, you are just going to be fine. This is going to return you the same type of results. So, so if I will debug, fail to run the pipeline, why? Because, okay, here. Uh, has Expression has leading space. So, so this is the space I need to remove because I copy pasted. So here. Now we should go and run. And uh, this has uh, executed just fine. There are two rows in this. Uh, there are not, I'm talking about rows anytime. So these are two rows, yes, and inside those values are there for the JSON, right? Now this is uh, completing just fine, no big deal, but we have to set the values. So I'm gonna go back here in the for each loop, just delete everything and set variable. So set variable here, another set variable here, and then uh, set an, another set variable here. Okay, so we can give name if we want, like uh, f name, l name, and then uh, you give a region name, region. Okay, so these are the three different activities. We can put them in parallel or we can put them in a, a sequence, doesn't matter. So go to the first name. Here you're going to go to variables, select the first name variable, then go to expressions here and add values. So we are going to go to for each loop dot item. And then we are going to say dot sale person first name. So this is IntelliSense is present there. So that's why it came just fine. Now we go to the L name uh, here, go to variable and go to the L name. And here we are providing items for each loop dot items dot uh, sale person last name. Person L name. Okay. So maybe I have made a mistake here. There is no. Uh, L name here. So this is the query. So I'm going to copy and paste and go back. So right there. I just want to make sure we are not making any uh, error. Okay. So now the last one is the region. So if you go right there, you can go to the output always here. And once you click in the white canvas and go to the output and here you can also copy from there. So see right there region can copy and I can go back inside go to my variable settings and here select region and then uh, I will do item dot region okay so now we are all good here let's uh, execute our uh, pipeline and uh, we should get the values uh, and uh, now let's see 
our uh, skip task uh, completed successfully now it went to the for each two items uh, total and in those uh, items that uh, we have these variable so if you see that first name Amir uh, this is a uh, first name Amir last name Shazad and then we have this value and go back here so check the other ones so see right there last name Shazad and then a third variable region should have North America then our next time when the loop used the second iteration the first name value became M and the last name became Raza and then the region is North America as well okay so this is how you loop through your output uh, uh, that you get from the script task so one more time you're gonna go to script here once you have the values you're gonna go to the for each and then in the for each in the settings you're gonna write this you're gonna say output dot result set result sets then put zero and then use the array name rows here so you can get the values from there so what I will do I will put the both expressions in the description and also the definition of this table so you can use it thank you very much for watching please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video